testing, testing. Okay, so a little bit about Social Explorer. Um, Social Explorer contains about 220 years of US demographic data. Um, it's essentially a digital tool that allows you to access this data, which, in, which also includes economic data, health data, religion, crime data, etc. cetera, um, in both visual and traditional report format. It includes uh, US census data back to 1790 as well as some specialized sources like the FBI crime reports, um, election data, and more. And there is some limited international data. Um, I do see that Social Explorer is adding more and more of that, but by and large, um, it's, it's focused on our domestic US data. So what I'm going to do is start by demonstrating how to actually access this tool. Um, the file library pays for a subscription to Social Explorer. So you'll want to follow this pathway that I'm showing you. You'll want to go through the library to access the database to make sure that you have access to all of the features that our subscription pays for. So here we are at the CSUSB homepage. We're going to go up to the library link here in the top right. And you can find Social Explorer under our database link. This is that icon kind of in the center right, right here, choose a database. And there are two ways how, where you, how you can access databases. One is through our A to Z list. So if you know the name of your database, in this case, we would just go to S to access it. The other way to access it is here over here on the left under databases by subject. We have a statistics category here on the bottom right. And if we click that, Social Explorer is the first database. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And here we are in the tool. So this is a really important piece here. Um, Social Explorer allows you to create an account and if you ever want to create a map or, or build a table and actually save that, you're going to want to log into your account. You can see here on the top right it says GS. I'm already logged in. Um, <clears throat> you don't need to necessarily do that right now, but just keep in mind that if you're in there playing and you create a map and, and you haven't logged in, it won't save it after you log in. So, the, the best thing to do is just go ahead and get in the habit of logging in from the get-go so that everything you create thereafter you're able to save. Okay, so this is our landing page for Social Explorer. Over here on the left, this kind of helps you navigate. Um, on the top left, it says Explore Maps, and this is highlighted blue here, so that tells us that's what we see over here on the right. This is also where you'll access tables, um, geodata is new. We won't cover that in today's session. Oh no, Barbara can't hear anything. Um, Barbara, I'm not sure if you can hear, um, hear me now. I'll go ahead and type something in the chat, but yes, this will be recorded. So I'll make sure that um, this, the recording gets sent to you. All right, um, over here under my projects also, this is where we can um, access maps and reports um, that you have created and saved. Um, okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead, we, as I mentioned, we're gonna explore maps. This is what we see over here on the right. To get in and start creating your own map, all you need to do is select one and click the blue explore button. So I'll just start with this one at the top. And go ahead and click explore. This is our default map. On the top left, this tells us what we're looking at. So we're looking at population density per square mile. The maps in Social Explorer, Explorer are dynamic, meaning if you hover over them, they'll give you more information about 
um, the particular state or area that you're hovering over. So here we're getting the population density of California. We hover over Colorado, we get the same and it changes and so on and so forth. Over here on the top left, this is where you will change your data depending on what you want to see on your map. So to do so, we'll click this blue change data. And there are multiple ways here for you to access data. The first is by year. Notice we have a row of, of years listed here. I'm going to click show all years. And notice we can go back as far as 1790. Under the particular year that you select, we have what are called categories. These are essentially things that are calculated um, in a survey that you can display on your map. So here in 2018, we see we can display population like we currently are viewing, um, data about sex, income, marital status, and so on and so forth. We can see there's quite a few different categories that folks have measured and accounted for. What I like too is it says, it gives you what's not available for the selected year. So 2019, for example, or 2018 doesn't have industry data yet. Travel time to work, religion. Um, just note too that it can be frustrating at times. Um, the way that surveys work is they're not necessarily administered every year, um, your, your data source, and it might not necessarily be measuring what you want for the particular year. So you kind of, this, is a, this is a case where you kind of have to work with what's out there. Let's go all the way up to 1840, just as an example, so you can see what types of things they were measure, looking at back then. So notice the categories we have available for 1840 are definitely fewer. We have population, sex, occupation, disabilities, age, race, and slavery. So this is something they were measuring back in 1840. This was legal back in 1840. So if we click on that, we can look at, for example, slave status and click on slave population. And our map changes. Notice it doesn't look the same because again, we're looking at data from 1840. And our map is um, color coded depending on the percentage of the population that was a slave population. So we go up to Maine, for example, um, 0%. And that's why we see a really light um, yellow color. But if we go down here to a state like Virginia, it's darker in color, 36.22% of the population was a slave population. If you go over to Missouri, it's not quite as dark of a color. It's an orange, 15.18%. We go down to Mississippi, which is even darker. We've got 51.97%. Um, and so again, I mentioned this map is dynamic. It changes based not only on um, the data that you're displaying, but also um, on the color scheme that you choose. And I will cover how to manipulate that in a moment. Okay. I'm going to go back here. So that's one way to select data is by just simply selecting the year that you want and narrowing down from there. The other way at the top here is if you click on all data by source, this allows you to select your source. So we're at census 1840, but this allows you to browse all of the different data sources that are available to you. So we have presidential elections, congressional elections, population estimates, religion, and so on and so forth. This does assume you know which source you want to pull your data from. So you, this is useful if, if you have an assignment or you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, the other thing that you can do is search. So we have this search for data um, icon up here on the top right. This is useful if, if you don't know what source you want to pull your data from, but you know a topic. So if I wanted to look at um, female income, for example, I can search my var variables and type that in. I'm going to change 1840 up to all years. Unfortunately, I don't think there was much female income in 1840. Um, my sources are all sources, and now I can skim everything from all of my sources all years that address female income. So if I go, I can scroll down here 
And if I want to look at, for example, a median income for population 15 and over female, um, I can see this is from the ACS. This is the American Community Survey from 2018, and it shows me the particular table. So let's go ahead and click on that just to see what happens. All right. And so I have my map here. Visually, this isn't, I'm going to close this. This isn't particularly interesting um, because the color scheme is, pr is pretty uniform here. So let's go ahead and pick something else. I'm going to change my data. I'm going to do my search again, female income. And let's do female householder, no husband present. There we go. OK. So this is pretty interesting. If we go over to Mississippi, we've got 10.16 female householder, no husband present. We compare that to a state like California, which is 4.73. Um, so we have a pretty interesting map right here in front of us. All right, and I should have mentioned if at any point you have any questions, feel free. Um, you can either use your microphone or use the chat and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, so in our box up here, the default is to show the data by state. So depending on the data and how it was gathered, you can also um, visualize or show the data by the county. So I just clicked on county and now, you, now we can narrow it down to county. And it also lets you get even narrower. So by con congressional, excuse me, congressional district, census tract, um, again, depending on the data, you can narrow it down by elementary or secondary school district and so on and so forth. I find that county data sometimes tells a richer picture than state data simply does, but again, it really depends on your goals as a researcher um, and the message that you're trying to convey as well as what sort of data is available. You can also change how your, your um, data is displayed. So again, we're, we are shading our data depending on um, how great the percentage is. So again, here, Lake County, Oregon, 10.75% is darker than Modoc County, which is 1.24%. We go up to shaded area. We can select bubbles which gives us larger bubbles for areas, for counties that have greater percentages. And we can do the same for dot density. Um, we see a dot down here. They don't always appear where you want them to. Dot density, I don't love. So just keep that in mind that the um, bubbles and dot density is available only for um, data that is gathered as counts and numbers whereas the shading is used for medians, rates, aver averages, and population density. So again, be aware that the visualization type, it might be limited based on the type of data that you choose to display. But again, I have a preference for county level shaded data. I think it makes sense, it's pretty obvious. Um, the other cool thing that you can do over here on the left is change your color palette. So the default is SE orange, Southeast orange. Not sure what that SE Southeast is referring to, um, but we can change that. We can change that to fern green, for example, um, or blue. So that's just, those are some other neat ways you can um, manip manipulate your <clears throat> visual however you like. Um, down here on the legend on the bottom left, you can also um, style your visualization down here. So if I click on this edit icon, um, this also opens that up and allows me to change the color palette um, and the visualization type. So that does the same thing. Okay, so some more ways that you can change your map. We see this hamburger icon, um, the more options icon on the bottom right of this top left box. If I open that up, <clears throat> it gives us some options for things we can do. The first is to create a report. Um, it will create a report of the entire map or just particular geographies that you select. I'm going to skip this for now because um, we're going to be creating, re I'm going to show you how to create reports at the end of the session. 
Um, but we're going to pop down to mask map data and what this allows you to do is really focus in on one particular geographic area by eliminating the data from the other, the surrounding areas, which can be really powerful if you um, would like to use your map for a presentation or a paper or something like that. So I'll click on this. And this is a matter of selecting the geographies that you want to highlight. So if I look at my map, I see that it's pretty interesting here. We have South Dakota, um, part of the Northwest, um, Midwestern part of the country here. We have some um, darker, darker shaded counties. So what I can do, I can either select each county using this arrow or I can do a rectangular se selection and basically select this area of interest and notice how all of the rest of these counties are blocked out. And so it will help my viewer, whoever's looking at my map, really focus in on the story I want to tell. And then you can zoom in. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Clear my mask. Let's start over here. There we go. Um, this will can help me tell the story that I want to tell. So I'm, I am going to go ahead and clear that mask, doing that by clicking clear mask in the top left and hit done. And I'm going to zoom back out so I can see this better. Go back into my hamburger icon. And I'm going to pop down here to filter areas. Filter, um, this is a fairly new feature, but what this allows you to do is um, add specific criteria. So essentially add another layer of data. So I'm going to add um, a variable. So if I want to, for example, um, on top of the data RDC, add, um, for example, race data, I can do that. And so I would, I would select um, the particular data point that I want to visualize on top of this, and that would add that additional layer. Go back to my hamburger icon. Here we have map layers. Some more ways that you can add or um, subtract information to your map. So if we look over here, we have a list of different um, information that's on our map. Um, so for example, our state boundaries are currently displaying. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that box and they'll disappear. It was pretty hard to tell because my county boundaries are shown, but I'll go ahead and remove those. And there you can see the difference. Those are gone. I should also note that as you zoom into your map, you will see more. So notice that those um, state capitals just appeared. We're getting some major cities. I just saw Omaha and Kansas City appear. More cities. More cities. And eventually, there we go. I'll get things like major roadways. And these are all things as you zoom in on the left here, you'll have the option to remove. So I'm going to remove streets and those are gone. Um, I can remove cities if I want and capitals. And so again, when I zoom out, I'll no longer see those. And I just have the state names. So let's go back in here. <clears throat> Under map layer, I also like this satellite view. This can be useful if um, the story that you want to tell with your data um, is in any way related to the geography or the topography. For example, you want to look at the movement of people or the movement of um, uh, like transportation, like commut commuter data or something like that. We can do a satellite view. And what it does is that it overlays our data on an actual satellite here. Um, over on the left, we can change the opacity of our data. So we can make that darker um, or lighter. We can change the color. So right now it's um, not very vibrant, but if we click on that, we'll get um, some more greens and browns. And then again, um, this is where you can add or remove some of those um, layers. So your state boundaries, for example, or your county boundaries. So I'll go ahead and put those back on. 
Okay, so my map's looking pretty different than when we started. <laughs> there we go. So final point, um, final piece I want to point out here with under our more options hamburger icon is the annotate map on the bottom. This is where you can add your own unique information again, which could be really useful for a presentation or a poster. Um, up here, um, these are where our options. So we can add a marker. I'm going to go ahead and add a marker. It popped up here in red. And this is approximately where I'm from, Belle Plaine, Iowa, town of about 3,000. Um, on our left, notice that I have the option to title this marker. So I'm going to go ahead and title it my hometown. The symbol here is red. If I click on this, I can change the color of that symbol. So I've just made it blue. Also the size and opacity. And we can do the same with the color of the text here. Notice if I want to add a legend to my map, this is where I would do so. Right here on the bottom, legend. I'll click on that and now my map has a legend. Underneath have appeared all the different things that I can add to my legend. So it, it wants to add this marker, my hometown. If I didn't want that in my legend, I would simply uncheck that box. Other options at the top um, are lines, boxes, uh, shapes. The arrow one might be helpful. So if I wanted to, for example, click on that and visualize my journey to Colorado, and then from Colorado, oopsie, from Colorado to San Bernardino, I could do so. And again, over here on the left, this is where I could title my arrows. I could change the shape, um, the size, the color, the width, and so on and so forth. On the top here too, um, we have what are labels. This is essentially where you can add text to your map. So if I wanted to actually on my map, um, go ahead over here, I'm gonna type in whatever I wanted to say. So my journey westward, I could do that. It's black, it's really hard to see up there. So I'm gonna change the color to white. And make it a little bigger and then I'll move it there and there we go there's my beautiful map my journey westward the other thing that's pretty neat too um, you can add an image to your map so if you um, for example wanted to and for this map I could add an image of um, CSUSB, which is what brought me here, and I could size that accordingly. Um, so some fun, fun ways for, for you to customize your map, again, depending on the story that you want to tell with your data. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And notice here that we have my legend has populated based on the um, annotations that I've created there. So I'm gonna pause there. Um, do you have any questions for me right now? Okay, well, if you do, just go ahead and use that chat function. All right, so I have one more thing I want to show you with maps and then we'll move to actually creating tables of your data. Um, but to do so, because I kind of have a, a mess of a map in front of me um, right now, but I'm going to go ahead and change my data. I'm going to go back to categories and let's select, let's see, 1980 and I'll go to population density per square mile. And my satellite is still on here, so I'm going to remove that. I'm going into satellite view, removing that. I'm also going to remove my annotations and just create a clean map here. So I'm going to 
delete all of these things here. Delete my arrows. Delete that title. Delete. All right, great. So we have started fresh. Okay, so I see a question here. Um, does it have to be all US or could we do a county? Yes, absolutely. Of course, it depends on um, the source and whether they have gathered count, um, county level data. But you see up here where it says um, we're viewing it by state, we can also select county. Um, and then if we zoom in, move my map over, we get data by San Bernard Bernardino County. Um, and you can also select county level data um, when we go into the tables. Um, there's some other um, different levels at which you can display your data. Here we just have census tract, but earlier we, we were looking at another source um, and we were looking at data by school district, for example. So again, it, what's, what's available really depends on the data that you're looking at, but for population density, absolutely. Okay. So I'm actually, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna move this back to state. And remember, we're looking up here at census 1980 data. If I go over to the right, I have an icon that almost looks like an open book and it says change map view. I'm gonna select that and I wanna choose side by side. And so now move this over. We have two identical maps side by side. They're both population density per square mile, and they're both from the 1980 census. What I can do, however, is change one of those, and I'll change the one on the right. I'll change the data. And what I want to do is select a different year, let's say 2016, but I want to choose the same data source and variable. So I want to do population density per square mile. And so what this allows us to do is do some comparison over time. So we can move our, oops, there we go. So we can see, for example, that if we hover over California from 1980, the population density per square mile is close to 150. We pop over here, it's a darker color. It's almost 250. This color scheme we've selected doesn't really demonstrate the drastic changes um, as well as I would like. So I'm gonna change this back to the default, the SE orange on both of these maps. And I think that'll give us a better visual. Kind of, I mean, we can definitely see California is a darker color. Um, same with Wyoming in 1980, population density was only 4.8 and now we're at six, so really sparse sparsely populated still, but there has been some change. Um, I want an even more drastic example for you all. So I'm going to change the data on the left, go back even further to 1950. We'll do population density per square mile. And I can already see on my map that it's not giving me that at the state level. So that's not going to work. Again, it's a limitation of what was collected when. Let's try 1970. Let's see what we get. There we go. Okay. So we can see some more contrast between 1970 and 2016. The other option I have for comparing maps or doing some comparing and contrasting over time is under change my map view, the swipe feature. And so this is a really neat interactive feature that allows you to move your map. So if we move the entire map to the left to 1970, we can slowly move it to the right to 2016. And we can see that these, many of these states are darkening as the population density per square mile increases. So yeah, Colorado's darkening, almost every state is darkening, but it provides a really neat way for whoever's viewing or viewing or interacting with your map um, to see change over time. So it can be a really nice educational tool as well. Okay, so at this point, um, you will have been logged in. And so you can save and share your maps that you create. So at the top, 
um, we have this share icon. This will give you a link that you can go ahead and send or email to someone else, your students, your colleagues, your professor, whoever. You can also embed your map into a website um, or email it directly. You can, here you can export your map as an image or you can save it. And I'll go ahead and save it now as, let me see, February workshop map. And I can provide a description if I want to. So we can do a side-by-side -side swipe. And I'm gonna hit save. I go here to the top left and go back to my dashboard, back to that landing page. This should look familiar. This is where we started. And under my maps, this is where I can find that map that I just saved. And here it is, February workshop map. And I can go back in and edit that or again, share that from here if I would like. So that's where all that stuff ends up that you save. All right, so let's go ahead and move to tables. Um, we started again here on the top left at Explore Maps. Tables are directly below. And when you go into tables, what you see are um, different sources of data. So we have um, the U.S. Decennial Census, the American Community Surveys, um, U.S. school data, health data, and then down here, this is where we have some, our, some of our international data, data on the Canadian Census, UK Census, European statistics data, and then um, development indicators from the World Bank. So again, it's not very robust as far as international data, but it seems like they continue to add more and more. Let's go ahead and select U.S. school data. And this is new. I haven't explored this yet myself. Um, and it will tell you a little bit about where the data is coming from. Um, if you click on more info, um, it will give you some more details about um, the survey and where that's coming from, the data source. But again, I'm selecting U.S. school data and I'm going to click begin report. Note that if you're using tables, um, you do need to know which data source you want to use. In maps, there's that nice search feature where you can just search a topic like we searched female income and it gave me options. Um, that's not available here. So again, you kind of need to know um, what sort of source that you, what source you want to start with um, before you even begin. Okay, so we're in School Digger 2018 school data. Um, this is where you can select a geographic type. And um, I know, Barbara, you asked about county level data. This is going to depend on the source. So School Digger, only, um, the, our only options are state level or LEA, which is um, like the school, school district. Um, I looked this up the other day. I can't remember the acronym off the top of my head. Um, but let's stick with state. Let's do California, add that. And let's compare Iowa, add that. You can select um, more than one state at, at the same time if you like. Um, you would just hold down your option um, function and then select those together. Or as I just did, you can click and add one by one. Then we will proceed to tables. And this gives you um, different options for what you want to add to your report. So here our options are rankings, school attendance, and school details. So let's say I were really interested in rankings of schools. I would go ahead and add that. And then show my results. And so here we have our um, data table. Notice here that you can um, over, over on the top right, click Excel and um, download this table in Excel format, um, or you can do an S, S, excuse me, CSV file um, for different programs like SPSS um, and SAS and so on and so forth. What I'd like to do is um, go ahead and choose another data source so we can create a more robust um, table. There wasn't much data there. So again, I'm at our dashboard 
let's go ahead, let's choose an American Community Survey three-year estimate. I know this is gonna give us a lot. Let's go back to 2011, 2013. I'll begin my report. And here we go, this is what I wanna see. Um, this gives me a lot of different options for geographic type. So let's do county and let's look at California and let's look at San Bernardino County and let's compare this to Riverside County. Again, I could add as many counties as I want, but um, for the sake of demonstration, I don't want my table to be too unwieldy. So we'll just stick with these two counties. I'll click proceed to tables. And now look at all these fun options I have for information to add to my table. So I'm just gonna pick a few at random here. Um, let's do average household size. That might be interesting to compare the two counties. And let's look at average family income. So income and household size. And we'll do show results. All right. And so here we have our nice neat table. Again, it's pretty tiny, but we could have added as much information as we wanted to depending on our goals. Um, but we can see here the average household size is 3.2 in Riverside County versus 3.4 in San Bernardino County. An average family income is 77,897 in Riverside and 72,422 in San Bernardino County. Um, and it gives you also a total on the right hand column if you'd like to see that. So again, it's a pretty tiny table, but we only selected those two, um, those two pieces, the household size and income. But I've ran tables on health data that can get pretty granular that gives you a really interesting picture about some of the um, disparities in healthcare access, for example. So you can do some really, really neat stuff with this. Okay, um, so I already showed you that you can download your data as an Excel file, file or a CS, CSV file on the top right here. Again, this is where you can save or share your table. And then I want to wrap up today by showing you a resource that we have um, created at the library. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the library's homepage. And if we click on library guides in the middle, we have created a guide um, with, some, with some supporting and useful information for how to use Social Explorer. The easiest way to get there is under the, with the search bar, just go ahead and search Social Explorer. Um, and notice this first hit has Social Explorer in bold. If you click on that, that takes you right here to the guide. Um, and so our homepage just sort of explains um, how to access our professional license going through the library's homepage, like I showed you before, gives you a sample map here. Um, and then you can use these tabs at the top to navigate the guide. The first one is for creating maps. It walks you through how to do maps, just like we covered today. Um, I also have a tab here for creating tables, um, how to start a report, what exactly you need to click on, um, and then an example report that I ran. And this is, um, I was looking at health data comparing Riverside and San Bernardino County. And I got this pretty interesting um, report here looking at birth weight, um, access to doctors, health insurance coverage, life loss, mortality, diet and exercise. Um, and so again, I was, a, I was able to identify some um, disparities in access here that were pretty interesting. Um, I also have a tab up here for citing maps and reports. Um, this just provide, goes to a link um, that Social Explorer has provided about how to cite their information. So if you're, you're using maps or tables and you want to uh, inco incorporate that into a lecture or a presentation or a paper, um, that can be really useful because I know citing data can be tricky at times. Um, and then finally, this last tab is a workshop recording. This was my workshop from last year. The interface has since changed, so um, hopefully I will have captured a good recording today and I will update that so you can always return to this if, if you um, just want to revisit how to use the tool. 
So that is all I have for you today. Um, I know we've wrapped up a little early, but we have that means we have some time for questions. So I'll hang out a little bit if there are any questions or if anyone would like to me to review anything one more time. But I do appreciate you joining me today. And like I said, I'm I'm hoping to get um, today's recording up here um, in this guide. I'll update this with today's recording so you can always access that in the future if, if you need a refresher. So thank you all.